Landudno to Glasgow, headliners tonight, Wait. Cavish in the bottle, man. Bondi and Van, how are you doing? Not bad at all, man. Very Super good, thank you. Uh, at what, uh, where is your head at right now? We're uh, a couple of hours away from this headline set. I'm just buzzing off here in Ashcroft in the background at the minute. It's good, like, get you hyped up hearing him. His guitar player's going for it as well. <laughs> so, uh, when you first burst on the scene, I, I love the confidence. You, you talked really openly about the desire to be doing this straight away. A lot of bands might have shied away and you know you you, you set your ambitions out, you set your stall out. How does yeah. it feel to be here? Unreal mate, it's uh, like you say we were always saying that, that was always the, the goal to be able to come to these kind of shows and headline the bills. So we, we've done this place a few times now so to go from the smallest dress room to the medium one to the main one now, bounce on, have the crowd there. So it's satisfying to sort of hit every rung on the way up, you yeah. know, from King Touch to everywhere in between to end the barrel lines yeah, and then yeah. second headline here a couple of years ago and then to come back and do the top slot. Yeah, get that it, satisfaction now. It was not so long ago we were just doing those tents, you know, like the smaller stage in our head. So like I say to be thrown up top and get the honour of bringing the house down tonight, it's gonna be good. I think well the atmosphere, the crowd are absolutely going for it today. What is it about you you think that that does whip people into such a frenzy because uh, your, your live shows there's a load of people that see you live and go oh yeah yeah I would like to, I would like to think it's that people can see how much we're enjoying it yeah you know the energy coming from how much we're and feeling playing the songs and things like that and then it sort of like becomes like a bouncing off each other sort of move then you know yeah I think perfectly said there I think it's uh, we'd like to think it's that it's you know that when they see us reacting like that they keep reacting like that it's like um, there's something just it undeniable about it and especially when you know people come see it live maybe if you've heard it recorded it doesn't strike you as nearly as much as it does live and uh don't know what that is it's just the mom momentum of the fans passion for it and i guess that, that keeps driving us to keep going and keep coming back with songs quick so that really it's just that and, and like you said we set our stall out in the early days that we wanted to just keep you know coming through so I, I, I think, think there's a bunch of acts on the bill. Um, you've all got that in common that you really care. And that's the way that Jerry Cinnamon put it yesterday. He said, the, the reason the crowd go for it is because they can see I care. Yeah, and yeah. Same with Stormzy, same with the man that's on the stage right now, Richard yeah. Ashcroft, and yourselves. Just an earnesty to it with the names you mentioned there, which I think people can relate to can pretty easily. Definitely. What about festivals as a punter when you go back and you were on, you were on this side of the, of the stage? What, what do you remember? What, what were the ones that stand out in your memory? Uh, which, which festivals in particular? Or, or, or people that you saw. Yeah. The ones where that passion was ignited and you thought, I, I need to be there. I think one of my favourite ones of being there as a punter was Bestival a few years ago. Just because yeah. they had such an eclectic mix. I saw like in the same build, like Big Audio Dynamite, there's Bjork, The Cure, and then, you know, Dub tents and all sorts of things like that. that, that yeah, that was one of my favourite as a as a gig goer. One of mine was like it wasn't it doesn't count as a gig goer, but it was uh it was in New York and I got to see the Strokes for the first time, so it was yeah like Governor Governor's Ball. So it was it was the first time we'd been out to America, I think, and I was just st sat back watching the Strokes in weather like this, thinking, how's this all got happened? Like this is wild. So that was one for me because of that moment seeing them. So, so th we're at this stage now. How do you? What will happen between now and, and when you go on stage? How do you get yourself in that in that zone? Yeah, uh, we've got like a little little jam room backstage. So you usually have a yeah, a little bit of a band practice. Have a little ciggy, <laughs> have a mooch about, listen to a bit of Ashcroft, just to kind of stay chill really. All, but until we you walk out and you see them go, then it's then it's game on, straight up. So yeah, just kind of be chilling now for a bit, won't we? In the sun, sun bathing. And you mentioned you brought up Ashcroft a, a few times. If, yeah. if you could, if you could work with the great man, would you? We've we've actually done a show with him in Russia, which is the first time I think I got to see him live properly. And it, yeah, I, I, yeah, we did that gig in Russia with him, and then I saw him up up here in Scotland supporting the Stones not so long ago. And he's he's a true purist, and he like you can see speaking about what we just were, like you can see how much the man still means it after all these years. Yeah. And I think when you get to a stage like this, um, you know, this is kind of a milestone, it's, it's good to look back at the lean times. So what do you remember about those really early days? There's, there's stories I've heard, I don't know if it's myth or legend, of playing in car parks after other people's gigs. Did yeah, that... the ninjas, catfish ninjas. Did yeah. that happen? Yeah that, yeah, that happened. We used to do that and then just give CDs out because there's so many people coming out of gigs at the end. We were like, these clearly like the music, don't they? So we'll give these some CDs. And we used to, if we're in traffic jams, get out in the traffic jams, put CDs on on the cars that are waiting. You know, knock on the window, put that on, mate. So um, we'd do anything we could to kind of get the music out there and 
like, like we always had our eye on this kind of thing, getting to this spot now and being able to play to this many people. It's unreal having them wake up at that time in the morning. Because we we were the same as, as big fans of going to see live music. We'd be the ones up at Bells trying to get tickets, or if they sold out, trying to get someone to get you some. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's unreal. The, it just the things you remember from the early days are all the kind of st the work you put into, I guess, getting here or going to see shows. You know, when you first go to see shows, when you start the band, that was always dead influential. Watching these people who could do it before you could even get booked for a gig. You know, so things like that, I guess, always what I remember. Well, there we go. From from car parks and traffic jams to yeah. the main stage headlining, trying to make have a great one. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Top, man. Nice one, Cheers, man. mate. No problem.